everyone to turn up the channel. I'm Christine Stiles, the Director of Sales Enablement here at Channel Assist, and it is my pleasure, along with my guest, Carl, Carl Wolfenden, to invite you to share in today's discussion about the insights on maximizing communications and content reach to drive revenue engagement with your channel and your channel incentive programs. I'm really excited about today's conversation as Carl brings a unique perspective to the conversation. He's a journalist. He has had thousands of conversations with channel leaders, and he's also a sales and marketing specialist, but also he's the founder of Business Class News Broadcasting and Connexus Business Development. Welcome, Carl. Thank you. It's great to be on this side of the uh, interview. I'm usually interviewing. I'm, I'm looking forward to this conversation. Well, I, I look forward to uh, hearing what you have to say and, and jumping in and, and sharing my thoughts as well so that we can make this conversational and, and give the, the, the biggest bang to our audience that we have today. So let's get started. So Carl, over the years, unfortunately, I've seen many companies spend a lot of time on developing their brand and developing their program and their incentives, and they don't put the same amount of effort in um, their communication plans. And you know this is unfortunate because these are targeted at the sales reps and influencers that they're really asking to act on these programs and as a result of these communications. And I know that you're a big believer in that if your audience doesn't know about the show, then they can't buy a ticket or they won't buy a ticket. So what can companies do with their channel communications to maximize their reach and impact on driving channel behaviors, sales, and engagements? That's a great question. I mean, you know, as we've talked about off camera and in other conversations we've been having, you know, you know the normal has always been, okay, let's, let's just uh, have this communication message uh, and then just send it out, et cetera and send it out to everybody and hope that somebody is going to, you know, listen to it as such. And unfortunately, you know, the trend has been that, um, you know, there's so much noise out there at the moment, you know, there's, there's so much, because at the end of the day, if you think about the, the, the person that you're trying to communicate, time is, is the only thing they have. <laughs> and it's a precious investment of so where are they going to spend their time? And so you got to make sure that, you know, that one size doesn't fit all, you've got to start to look at who is the audience um, that you're going to be uh, addressing it to? What is the piece of content, and then start to really um, sort of uh, be, be more focused on how you're communicating to that audience so that it's more relevant. So, so yeah, they actually have, they've invested that time to, to consume it because they've got all these other channels coming in as such. What is it going to be that you're going to give them as value as such? So, so really one size doesn't fit all anymore. And that, that, that was the norm. And this broadcast uh, mentality is, has changed. Uh, and, and so we, we've kind of, you know, well, over the years, as, as you say, I've spoken to many, many uh, sort of uh, business leaders, channel leaders, et cetera. And it's obvious that really we've got to start to be more you know, focused. And there's three areas. There's this education. You know, you've heard me say it. that's my favorite word is education because people don't know what they don't know. So really, you've got to educate them of what you want to do and then have that communication message that, that, that goes out there uh, and, then, and then focus on that, as I say, that specific audience. So I'm really disappointed to hear that there isn't a magic pill that we can <laughs> use because that would, that would make I'm working everyone's on life it. easier. You're working on it. That's yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also with the, the channel ecosystem becoming more complex, um, you know, how do you make it feel personal yet maximize your reach and, and measure impact? Because you, you can't do individual messages to everyone and, and, and you know, you can't have one on ones with everyone. Like, how do you make it, it personal and, and ensure that you're having the impact that you intend? Well, you know, we, we used to have all these, uh, you know, these these 
and development, program development, content development sort of meetings as such. Uh, and one f- lovely um, sort of analogy that somebody came up with with one of our meetings was, it's, it's like going into a party. You're a stranger in town. You've been invited to the party and you go into this room of people and then you start talking about, now, um, I don't know if the audience out there know uh, Manchester City and Manchester United, but I'm a Manchester City fan. And I walk into this party full of Manchester United fans, but I didn't know that. And I started to talk about that we're literally, you know, the best team in the world and we're blue. And all of a sudden, I think very quickly, I'd be thrown out of the, <laughs> thrown out of the party. And what, what I'm, where I'm get, going with this is you've got to start to understand. You've got to research. You know, what is it people are looking for? What, do, what interests them? What is it going to be to take that conversation, not just from a, a, a me talking at the screen, but then having a two-way dialogue and then having value to the person at the other end? So if I knew that these were all Manchester United fans. First of all, I wouldn't turn up. But, and that's another point, you know, that's the other thing. You've got to look at, you know, who is going to turn up at the party and who wants to listen to your message as such. And so so what what we need to do is, as I say, create that, what I like to say, a content calendar. We have calendars all over the place with, with different niche shows that we have. Uh, and and niche uh, sort of uh, topics because we know and we call this narrow casting you know we because again we talked earlier about broadcasting and hoping that it all something lands well narrow casting is very much more you know focused okay i'm going to have my calendar of of topics i know exactly when they're going to be so then you start to train and sort of you know uh, get your audience to go you know what i got to listen to this piece uh, because it's going it, to, I'm going to have some golden nuggets that are going to come out of this and it's valuable for me to do that. So we've got to create a, a content calendar to do that and then, and then drive that, as I say, focused audience. I, I love that idea of narrow casting because, and the content calendar, because, you know, we all get bombarded with, you know, different digital communications um, requests and and webinars and things like that. And we really need to be able to understand what is of the value to us. So I, I love it having that calendar and even communicating that calendar out to your audience so that they can be selected in their time and, and you don't lose traction with them by, you know, feeding them the wrong information or not giving them the option to opt out, but focus on what is important to them. Because especially in the channel, you know, what is good for one individual is not always going to be good for another in, in, in the rep community or the influencer community. And, and we need to be able to give them those choices so that we we are seen as valuable and, and, and part of their day-to-day practices and advancing their, their individual businesses. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I think, you know, we've touched on when I've, I've talked on other shows when, with yourself and your colleagues, et cetera, that, you know, you, you have, you have your partners out there in the channel uh, and you look at the, the overall infrastructure and the ecosystem of your, of your channel and you'll start to say, okay, well, that individual or that partner isn't performing the way that I want them to perform as such. Oh, so mm, I'm going to focus on over here. But the thing is, those people over there that aren't performing for you, guess what? They're performing for somebody else. So you've got to start to think, okay, well, what is going to be a powerful topic to pull them in and to have mind share? of uh, for, for take mind share away from uh, you know and uh, maybe another product or another uh, channel partner or so bring them into your ecosystem and if you can do that you can start to add value to the whole uh, partner community and channel community rather than just be focused on the ones that are doing really well because the if you look at it you can actually you know increase the revenue by just turning those poorly performing people, but you've got to create the content to move them from over here to over here. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And and I think, you know, our, our president, Richard Stevens, he always brings up the long tail that you just described. 
And, uh, you know, he always says, you know, you gotta, you gotta tell them why they should sell your product. You've got to tell them, you know, it's not about your product features. It's, it's about, you know, the, the why behind it, what's in it for them. How do you make it easier? You know, are they lacking? in confidence, you know, and you train them up. So you really have to, as part of that personalization, you have to be able to, you know, get some insights and create that dialogue so you can understand, you know, what they need and what they want and really what's going to be relevant and impactful immediately for their business because time is money for the channel, whether you're a partner or a rep or an influencer. Yeah, I mean, uh, the the one thing that we've learned over the years, um, you know, we, we as I say, I've talked to thousands of business leaders uh, and and sales leaders, uh, and and literally, you know, th- they're saying that really what we, what we've got to do is we've got to have a conversation. We've got to have a conversation with our sales force, you know, our channel, uh, and and it's a two way conversation as well. Use these, the, you know, we're talking here about, of course, from my side of things, either video or podcasts as such, but it really lends itself to any communication tactic that you're going to have. But ask for feedback. One of the things, the great things that we try and do on Business Class News and Channel Talk 101 is literally say, okay, what are the questions that you want us to answer? And if you really, talking about personalization, you can start to see where there's trends. You know, there may be a gap between what you think that the audience wants to hear. And then literally you, you say, wait a minute, they're asking me to ask questions about this over here. So let's put a, a whole series together, which answer that. And then you'll bring in a new audience. And that's mm-hmm. the key. And then have that conversation. It's a dialogue. It's, it's not just one way where I'm talking at you. It's I want to have feedback. Yep. No, and, and that's great. And there's so many different, you know, methods and tactics that, that you can communicate and, and you, you know, different things for different people. And, you know, we're definitely in, in a digital communication boom right now. And just the number of channel podcasts is exploding. And for instance, Forrester just came out with their, their top 100 list. And, uh, you know, since I know that you are the host of, of Channel Talk 101, I was curious of, you know, why podcasts are so popular and effective, effective in building and engaging those channel communities. And, and what does make a powerful podcast? That's a great question. I mean, so, so one of the things that we've learned over the years, I mean, everyone was saying, oh, video is, is, is king, et cetera. But video really is blips. You, you can't have a video that's more than three, three minutes long, really. People just don't watch those videos. What happened when um, you know, you, people started making these videos, they would say, how do I cram everything? I mean, you know, I, yeah, we have an advertising department that, that specialize in, okay, how do I get a 60-second message into that block? as such, but it's very difficult to communicate a whole strategy or a a philosophy or a product launch or whatever, just in in those three minute blips. They're great to enhance what you're doing, but what we found was, and I I come from radio, so I mean, I'm a massive radio uh, fan because that's where I grew up. I, I, I started my career in radio. And the the thing that we always used to say about radio was that you start to become you have a relationship with that uh, the, with the presenter with the DJ as such you start to have you you become friends it's that personification you know people used to say that if if you're driving to work you you always turn the morning show on or, or is it, I call it in England a breakfast show the breakfast show and and, um, and then you'd listen to them on the way to work. And, you know, have fun. And there'd be some things that you'd be talking about all day. Hey, did you listen to whatever? And you'd create that relationship. Well, what happened was as podcasts started to become more um, popular, you know, you have all these distribution channels. You've got Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio Podcasts, all these distribution channels. Again, you've got to remember your audience has a choice and you can't alienate your choice. You can't just say, I'm going to have it housed on my website. You want it to be distributed, but again, 
focused and narrow casted to people that you want to subscribe to your channel on those distribution platforms. And so what happened was that people could download them. You could download that that podcast and listen to it whenever they they wanted to, um, and so and you could so you can actually have a twenty minute a one hour show etc. As long as you've got the content and uh, and and it's valuable to the listener. So that's why it exploded. But to your point about the the you know the top one hundred or whatever, you know what we found is we don't want to be you know we don't want millions of just general listeners we want to have a focused audience and that's why we say we're, we're more of a narrow cast yeah no i think that's great and and uh, you know one thing in terms of you bought, brought up a very good point you have to find out where your your audience is also visiting already so you can be where they are you, you you need to go where they are and also you know we touched on earlier that you know reps really when you're competing for their sales you're competing for their time whether it be their personal time whether it be their fitness time whether it be their selling time you know you've got to fit into that mold and and you compete with everything they do so I mean we're I have friends that have their favorite podcasts and 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 they turn them on when they're going for a jog or you know I'm I'm like you at you know talk radio on my commute home because I could you know that was the commentator and or the podcast that I wanted to listen to 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 take up that time in my day so you know absolutely agree that you know things like podcasts things like webinars, they need to be timely, relevant and valuable, so that you know, your audience sees the value in making that investment in what you are, are, are delivering, and then going that next level of acting on it. Oh, yeah, I mean, but the thing the thing is, also, you, you've got you've got to make it entertaining. You know, so, so, you know, I, I, grew, I grew up in the world of LMS, learning management systems, et cetera. And you, you, you put out modules and you had certification and, and all of that, which is great. You need to have that moving the cheese down the line so that the person gets absorbed into what your product knowledge is, et cetera. But podcasts are a great, great way of actually seeding in, you know, a, a, a sort of light version of of conversational of why what you just did on on the learning management system your your certification as such you know why is it important and it, make it entertaining have a vp of whatever department is involved in that certification on as a as a as a, as a guest and then have that talk and that chat and then put an example together and, and showcase, you know, why is it important uh, as such for, for them to have done it? Because, you know, you know, trainings, ex I mean, again, education, education, I always talk about education, but it's all about making it fun, engaging. And we are, we've all seen, you know, how gamification has, you know, exploded, you know, the interaction with, with, the uh, sort of that learning process well the same with you know your communication pieces make them entertaining engaging as such I would say yeah and and I think there's ways that you can take say you know the dry spec sheet and convert it into something that is has that element of fun you know whether it's a scavenger hunt whether it, you know, a digital scavenger hunt whether it's a, a quest where you earn badges as you learn there's so many ways that companies cuz we often we often hear here you know like i've got this material but it, it you know it's boring or it, it, you know what can i use to do my training and, and they don't realize that, you know, now you have to take the assets you have and convert them into discussions on a podcast, a communication campaign. And it's, it's spinning those off into omni-channel communications and, and marketing pieces and, and games and, and training that's really going to allow you to adapt to that very complex audience because, you know, no person is alike. And what works for me may not work for you. And, you know, so, so you really have to take one piece and put it into that, that communication calendar that you talked about and make sure you're really optimizing it and, and, and resonating and making relevant to, you know, such a complex ecosystem that we have now in the channel. It is. And, and again, you've got to think of it as a blend. 
a blend of communication tactics, you know, podcast or video or, you know, print or digital sort of delivery, gamification is they're all tactics, but they all have to blend together. Because one of the things, again, that I'm learning is that the workforce is changing, you know, Mm -hmm. it's getting younger, it's getting younger. uh, And, you know, more, more of our uh, you know, uh, you know, experienced folks uh, are either moving on or they're retiring, etc. So you've got this this wave of younger people coming into the workforce, and they would like to be communicated in a different way. Now, what I what I remember talking about, and I know I talk too much, don't I? But what I what I, what I remember we, we talked about was is is audio. Is it, is it the way forward? Is it something, because we kept hearing about video, et cetera. Well, we realized that in universities and college, college students love to listen to audiobooks. They love to listen to uh, different ways, different ways of ingesting information. So podcasts, that's why it's exploded so much, is just that natural progression. I'm looking for information. I'm looking for content that's going to help me, you know, in my job, in my career, in my life as such. And so what we've got to look at is what is that blend? And and you've got to look at that audience is getting younger and how do you address it? Yeah. And I, I think, you know, just, you know, when we talk about how complex things are becoming, you know, you, you very eloquently said that, you know, like there's different, there's three, if not four generations that are in the channel right now right? Like forget about the different roles, whether it be, you know, partner, partner management, sales engineer, influencers, you know, you've got this, this, this pot of, of people that you have to try and engage because they all influence the consumer. They all, you know, drive the, the, the buying journey. And, uh, you know, I, I think also that the other thing that I would say is because there's such a mix, you really have to do, you know, have the ability with how you communicate and how you operate your channel program to be able to, you know, have visibility in terms of how it's working, whether it be at the partner level, the region level, you know, a specific campaign, a SKU, a rep, you have to be able to do that. And, and that's why, you know, when I see people still running their communication campaigns on spreadsheets or their channel incentives still on spreadsheets, I don't know how they, they just don't go crazy because there's so many layers that you have to evaluate and, and test out to make sure that you are attracting the people you want and, and getting them to act on a regular basis in the way you want them to. And I think that's why, you know, companies often fail at engaging the long tail that 80% that, you know, are lazy reps or underperforming reps because they're just not talking to them in the right way or they're not enticing them over to their side of the equation. So, you know, they having things like podcasts and, and all these different tools at your disposal is, is really exciting for us marketers and us channel incentive program organizations because we can be creative with those campaigns and we can test things out and fail quickly or you know capitalize on what is working and and make it even even bigger well remember also because because it's a podcast there's two sides to a podcast you can have you're educating your channel etc and then also you can create podcasts that can be branded with your partners so mm-hmm. that they all of a sudden it becomes valuable to the partners so that then they can use that as a marketing tool to actually you know sell to their customers which benefit you so it, it's 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 such a great way of doing it because, you know, like, like you, you co-brand, you know, printed material or co-brand videos, you can, you can create content that is actually valuable to your partners to be able to rebrand and repurpose so that they can benefit from it as well. Yeah, no. And, and very true the the gap between the, the vendor or the manufacturer, the channel and the customer is just narrowing with things like marketplaces. And, and as you said, you know, uh, the younger generations going on and, and doing their own research and wanting to be self serve, whether they're part of the channel or, or the customer base. And, you know, so, so having those different options is, is really, really important. And, and, you know, it's sort of like a puzzle. You have to find all the right pieces and they have to fit together properly. 
And if you don't have it, you're going to underperform or, you know, potentially even alienate your, your, your customer base and your channel base. So, you know, definitely lots of, of, of fun to be had when it comes to communications. And I, I really hope that, you know, companies do start to put as much time and effort into communications than they do with coming up the logo with the logo for their program. So, cause you know, it's, it's, there's that, that, uh, I think it was a baseball movie, you know, if they build, if you build it, they will come. That doesn't exist. No, it so doesn't. you got to, use communications to continually drive that engagement. So Carl, no doubt we could talk about channel communications and podcasts and the digital boom for hours. Um, but let's see if there's any questions. Brooke, do we have any in the chat? Uh, yeah, we do. And uh, again, a reminder to everyone, you can uh, click on the QA button and you can add questions. So the first question here is what is the, and I guess it doesn't say for who it is, so I'll leave it open to both of you. What is the biggest mistakes company make in communicating with the channel? So I guess an open-ended question, biggest mistakes. So, so Carl, if, if it's okay with you, I will, I'll kick that one off just because I yeah. have a really great analogy. So, um, so when I talk about channel communications, I like the, the, to use the analogy of getting healthy. Um, because it's not simply enough to buy that gym, gym membership, you have to put the work in to do the right things at the right time to get the right results that you want. And so, for instance, what works for me might not work for you. And if I want to get, you know, the strongest arms and, you know, have a, a gun show, um, you know, if I work my legs out once a month, I'm not going to get there. And I also have to mix in things like nutrition and sleep and water in order to, to really, you know, ensure that I don't hit a plateau or that I underperform. And I, I think I like to say you need to have the same mindset with channel communications. And so the mistakes that I see out there or, or the limits people put on their communication plans is they focus on mass communication. They do the same thing over and over, like having a gigantic channel wide, you know, newsletter where everything in the kitchen sink is in there. And, you know, they send things out to the partners and expect them to filter to the reps or influencers. And they don't align things in their channel. So everyone's doing separate things and, and they're not linking their communications with their revenue driving and training activities and incentives to really get that engine revving. Um, so the way I say is, is mix it up, make it personal, make it interactive. You touched on before Carl, that you have to make it fun and go direct to the reps, um, because they really are the ones that own the, the, the channel relationship. Um, but also give indication, like what we talked about before is they have different needs. They have different maturities. The way you communicate with an SMB rep. Is they have different needs than say a national a reseller or a sales engineer. So you have to, you know, keep that who the individual is in mind there. And also, you know, not all reps have access to things like sales training or, or market insights. So if you can weave those into your communications as well, that's another great way to gain interest and trust and show that you're invested in their success. So just to go back to the, the fitness analogy, a good personal trainer looks at each person as an individual or each group as an individual. They adapt to what they need, but they also ensure that they're fueling their bodies, they're working out on a regular basis so that they really can get those results that are gonna drive not only what they wanna achieve, but more importantly, what you wanna achieve. Anything to add, Carl? Well, I think I think uh, I love that analogy. Uh, I, I think the the analogy that I would extend to that is, you know, look at um, again content calendar. If you because at the end of the day, that's what the personal trainer will do. They'll put the calendar together of your daily routine, your 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 uh, diet, etc., your routines, your workouts, etc. But it doesn't stop after three months. It, that's the key thing to what we say is look. Uh, I have a saying: repetition. Uh, Bill's reputation 
okay? Repetition means builds reputation. So if you say the, not the same thing, but you keep the, the, the communication message going for a period of time, then you actually get better results because you've got to keep it going, to keep that momentum going. Um, and as you say, you've just got to have that mentality to do that. And the only way you're going to have that is if you have discipline and you have discipline to put a plan together for 12 months. Yeah, you yeah. Don't, don't just think of it as, oh, we're going to launch it, have this big, big launch, and then little things down here. It doesn't work it, because, as you say, people are trying to ingest information. And if there's only this over here, they'll go over to the next shiny thing. I know they will. Yeah. And, and I, I love that because, you know, it, it, it's, it's sort of a lifestyle, right? You know, you can't do things for, for a day and expect to de deliver results. And also, you know, you got to make it easy for the channel. You got to make it predictable. You know, if they know something's going to come out and it's have value to them, you know, they're more likely to, you know, incorporate it into their routine to be able to consume that information or, you know, make sure that you're giving them things that show how easy it can be if they participate or the value that's in for them. So, you know, I, I, I love the way that you, you stretched it out into, you know, more than I'm going to, you know, buckle down for 30 days and, and then I'm going to leave them to their own devices. We know that that doesn't work, you know, that set it and forget it or, or, you know, if you could have done it alone, you would have done it already. You know, reps want to have that engagement and the channel wants to have that engagement long term too. So love that idea. And as a marketer, you know, if there's a, a year long plan, you know, I've done work up front that I can just, you know, peel things out and evaluate them rather than having to invent something over and over and over again. So that's And great. you can change it out as well. I mean, that's yep. the thing. If, you, if you're seeing a curve that's going off track, you go, okay, I need to reevaluate evaluate this and then go and put other things in topics that are being, again, that continuous feedback from the audience. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Two-way communication. Sorry. So this next question actually is for Carl. Carl, what was your most interesting business guest and why? Oh, that's a, that's a great, uh, a great question. It was uh, me. It was me. Of course it was. <laughs> uh, or, or Richard Stevens, of course. Yes. Uh, now, I, I, th I think um, I had on my show um, a gentleman that wrote a book um, about Amazon. And he spent in, um, I would say, uh, about five years in the trenches and he, he got gathered, he was talking to executives, to Bezos and all those uh, guys and gals uh, and really put this interesting book together. And then I just thought it was going to be a book about, you know, Amazon being this great, you know, the title was the Amazon, the behemoth. And I thought, oh, it's just going to be a, a book about that. Um, and then all of a sudden he started to talk about the intricacy and the, the ecosystems within Amazon as uh, uh, the, the, if somebody has an idea, they, they incubate that idea and they bring teams in and it's like, like a startup. And then that's how they quickly accelerate and, uh, and, and, and grow. Now, I wouldn't say that's one of my interesting, but that, that was a question, a person that popped into my head straight away. And I think Carl, that also, you know, it brings up the point that you went in making assumptions about it, what it was and, yeah. You know, and then really it was about something different. So, you know, in, in your communications, make sure that that message is getting out so your audience doesn't dismiss it too. So, you know, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Carl. Uh, next question is about starting a new channel program. So they're asking, I'll try to paraphrase, wh what are the top three things your communication plan must have to grab mind share, but besides the normal things? So maybe talk about maybe the top three other things to think about to grab mind share. Carl, do you want to kick that one off? Just yeah, to I can, go along I can, with your calendars? Yeah. I mean, one of the things is, is making sure that you have, you have the, you got to look at the big picture. I always say, look at the, what is the end result that you want? And then back into that as such. So, so literally you've got to, you've got to make sure that you have the topics that are going to make the most impact as such going to have the tools you know so yeah we we use we use articles we do special features on business class news and then we we literally um have podcasts that are specific to you know driving that 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 
message over. And then we have forms that actually can have that feedback uh, for, from it. So, so those are the things from my point of view. Now, when I when I used to run, uh, you know, incentives, you know, for channels, etc. Um, you know, the theme was always the big thing. You said about you spend so much time looking at the logo and the the headline, etc. But you know, yes, that's that's a big part. That's your that's your keystone uh, as such. And then you've got to work back and say, okay. How do we make that, you know, go for gold and all those those wonderful programs that, that we used to run. But then you say, OK, well, what can we do to to enhance that, to really engage with the audience? That's what what I would say. And, and I think I would add from a, um, you know, a channel incentive program side of things is, you know, we want the ramp up on programs to be instantaneous. So with a new program, I think you have to be also realistic that it's going to take time to get traction with your program. So you want to use different things that, you know, are fun and interactive and really start to show the, the rep that your program is a destination and, you know, no one has unlimited money as well, especially when you, you know, you spent time, you know, setting it up and building your brand and, and developing it. So I think the other thing is, is that it's important to look for non-monetary ways to incentivize and engage and create that sense of fun and interaction with your program. So you build that rapport, you build that consistency of them coming to your site. Like for instance, one of the, you know, the hottest prizes didn't cost our, our um, program sponsor anything. It was simply the opportunity to sit down and have a half an hour chat with their, their channel chief. And so reps were crawling all over themselves, you know, trying to get this prize because it had instant value to their business because each sales rep is running their own business. So having the opportunity to sit down with, with that, that channel chief, you know, didn't cost the sponsor anything and they were able to get that traction. So look for those fun and engaging and ways to ramp up before the program actually has, you know, claim activity or, you know, big activities that you're trying to drive like revenue growth, because that too takes time. They have to change gears. They have to adapt. They have to get their pipeline going in, in the areas that you want. So, you know, new program, make sure you also include how you're going to get them in that rhythm and get them used to coming to you um, as a valued partner. Yeah, that, that, that goes back to that uh, repetition, builds reputation. Just keep that momentum going uh, for sure and make sure that it's relevant. Absolutely. Great. Uh, it looks like uh, that's all for the questions, unless there's any more. So, Christine, I'll leave it to you to end off. Perfect. Well, thank you, Carl. I really enjoyed this. And thank you to all of you for joining us. We appreciate the great questions. And as Brooke said, we'll send you out the recording and our contact information. And we wish you all a great day and, and please get creative with those channel campaigns. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you, everyone, the audience uh, for joining us today. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a good one. Stay safe.